If I gave you the choice between $5 and $10, I think most of you would pick this one. But in China, more people might actually choose the $5 note. And it's kind of because of a pair. To make sense of this pair, I need to tell you a short story set in ancient China. It's about a four-year-old boy called Kong Rong who has to split up a bunch of pairs amongst himself, his older brothers, and his one younger brother. Kong Rong makes a decision to take the smallest pair for himself, and his father is watching him as he does this, so he explains to his father that it's because his older brothers should be the ones to eat the bigger pairs. His father is delighted hearing this, but he asks, Asks, what about your younger brother? Since he is younger than you, shouldn't he get the smallest pair then? Kong Rong responds, because he is younger than me, I should leave the bigger pair for him. This story is called Kong Rong Yields Pairs, and yielding is the key to answering this question. Kong Rong's story illustrates two types of yielding, giving things up to someone older than you as a sign of respect, and giving things up to someone younger than you as a show of modesty. Yielding is a core cultural value in China, and Kong Rong's respectful choice to yield is one of the first introductions to Confucian morals that young kids learn about. Now, here's a spicy question. Question. Will people in China today follow Kong Rong's example and give up the better choice? A group of researchers, Zheng and others, decided to put this to the test. They wanted to see if people would give up the larger pair. However, they weren't going to get people to choose between actual pairs. After all, someone could just not like pairs and go for a smaller one. So they used money. The first experiment was precisely to offer a choice between $5 or $10. Undergrad students were recruited as participants and did a task that was unrelated which they believed was the experiment. Then afterwards, researchers gave them an option of a red pocket with $5 or $10 to thank them for their time. Of course, this was the real experiment. Crucially, researchers told them that the dollar note they ended up not picking would be given to one of their fellow participants. What do you guys think happened? The majority of participants, 65% of them, picked the smaller compensation sum of $5. They willingly chose to get less money. Now, this choice is illogical according to economic rationality principles, but even just with common sense, this decision doesn't feel right. By choosing $5, the participants lost money, but they must have gained something else to make the choice worth it. To understand what it is they gained, we need to take a deeper look into this idea of yielding in Chinese culture, what it means to give something up for others, and how it's most commonly practiced. For starters, as you can see, yielding is most commonly practiced between siblings in China. For example, preschoolers are already being taught to give up prize toys to toddlers younger than themselves. As long as there's someone younger than you, there will always be an expectation to yield. As the younger sibling, I can tell you this was the most broken thing ever. If I ever got into a fight with my older brother and my mom stepped in, she would always expect my brother to yield simply because I was younger. I didn't really think much about this yielding thing growing up, probably because I was benefiting from it, but looking back, sometimes it must suck being the older sibling. That being said, on behalf of the younger siblings, we thank you guys for everything you've done. Younger siblings can be grateful too, once every 23 years. Because yielding is so commonly practiced as a sibling, it's interesting when you consider China's one-child policy. Without any siblings, you'll always be the youngest in family, you'll always be doted on, and you'll always have the right of way. Without siblings, there are far less chances for children to practice modest yielding. This fosters more individualistic values rather than collective ones. And of course, with increased globalization, we also have Western values like freedom of expression and individualistic desires coming in to further diminish the practice of yielding to others. When it comes to the significance of yielding as adults, it becomes a much more sophisticated way of interacting, of expressing status, power, and humility. Yielding is associated with prestige, and being able to yield when appropriate is highly valued in China. The decision-making process is fascinating to look into and can be expressed through a model. It's going to look a bit confusing at first, but it'll make sense as we walk through it, and I'll do my best Khan Academy impression for the next 60 seconds. Okay, here we go. What we're seeing is the story of Kong Rong Yield's pairs. Kong Rong's choice of pairs is represented through this big pair and this small pair. And biological dimension sounds really fancy, but think of this as like a ranking by size. This arrow pointing up is utility, which is another way of saying how much we get out of doing something. Doing work would rank low on here for me. Taking a nap for six hours ranks kind of high. So maybe I should go take a nap now. In the pair scenario, we're going to define the amount of satisfaction we get from eating a bigger pair or a smaller pair as value. In Kong Rong's story, everyone wanted the bigger pair and it was more valuable because of its size. And if we wanted to be really specific, the bigger pair is this much more valuable than the smaller pair. Then what about this side with the smiley faces? It's the same idea. The smiley faces are on the social dimension, with it representing social cultural values like yielding. This time, utility isn't about the satisfaction you get from eating the pairs, rather it's about the social consequences that come with choosing each pair. And we'll call this worth. 
If we follow the pairs, we can see that the smaller pair actually gives a bigger smiley face because by yielding, Kongrong is doing the respectable thing. If he chooses the bigger pair though, he won't feel quite as good. Now we're seeing a trade-off. Big pair makes us feel better on the biological dimension and small pair makes us feel better on the social dimension. So how do we make the call on what pair to choose? Our decision will come to which dimension has a greater difference in utility. The difference in worth is bigger than the difference in value. So Kongrong will feel like doing the respectful thing is more important than getting a few extra bites from the bigger pair. It's important to note here that the biological dimension is something that actually exists. With the bigger pair, there's no question that choosing it means you get more food, but the social dimension doesn't physically exist. We only hold the idea of respect in our minds and as a collective, but it's not a tangible thing. Because of this, we'll also refer to this social dimension as a fictional dimension. With all of that explained, we can get into some more juicy experiments. Researchers wanted to see how fictional dimensions can have a real impact on the decisions we make. Except instead of testing yielding again, Zheng and others decided to test something else. I'm not going to say what they're testing yet because I'm actually going to ask you guys the same questions and then I'll tell you what it's about. So here's the scenario I have for you. You're getting a new phone number and you have two options. Option one, your phone number ends in and it will cost you $10. Option two, the number ends in and it will cost you $20. Which choice would you go for? Remember your answer to that one and now there's one more question. You've come to me to buy some lanterns and again I have two choices for you. Option 1, a white lantern for $10 or option 2, a blue lantern for $20. What would you choose? And that's it. The questions seem pretty easy but did you know that a part of you guys would have generated an extra dimension just then? That dimension is superstition. This is definitely a if you know you know thing because of how culturally rooted superstitions are. So let me explain. In the first phone number scenario, I actually didn't read out the numbers because I would have said it in English so in case any of if you guys read numbers in a different language that's not English, you were free to do that. But why was I being so conscious of this? Because in Chinese culture, some numbers are considered lucky or unlucky because of the way they sound. 516, the first option, is a neutral number. It doesn't really mean anything. But 518 is a number Chinese people will probably pick up on because it reads in Chinese as 518, which sounds like 我要发, or I'm gonna get rich. Therefore, if you were aware of this, you would have generated an extra fictional dimension based on superstition, and you would see the choice as I can get a neutral number for $10 or a lucky number for $20. As for the lanterns, the hidden meaning is that white lanterns are only used for funerals in China. So if you knew that, the choice for you would be spending $10 on a white lantern associated with people passing or $20 for a blue lantern, which doesn't hold any meaning. How do you think your answer compares to everyone else? I asked my viewers on Instagram and in both cases, the majority leaned towards the cheaper option. I also asked everyone if they were of East Asian descent, but thinking back, I should have been more specific and narrowed it down to Chinese descent. Regardless, we can't draw any conclusions, but I thought these results were quite interesting to see. It was easy for me to ask these questions to my viewers because everyone comes from very diverse backgrounds. So either you know these Chinese superstitions or you don't. But how were the Chinese researchers going to replicate this test in China and prove that it was superstitions that affected the final choice? They landed on bringing in a group of kids and a group of adults. The hypothesis was, since superstitions are learned, young children aged 3 to 6 would not have been socialized into holding these values yet, so they won't be able to pick up on any of the hidden meanings. And they were right. The children were first shown numbers 1 through 10 just to confirm they could identify each number. And when they could, they were shown 10 different phone numbers with the last three digits ending from 510 to 519. They were then shown lanterns from each color of the rainbow plus white. Researchers then asked children if there was anything noteworthy about any of these numbers or lanterns. When it came to lantern colors, only 20% had some kind of inkling and that was that they saw red ones more often, like during spring festivals. However, the kids couldn't explain any meaning behind it at all, just that they had noticed it more. All of the three to six year old kids recognized the numbers fine, but none of them knew any meaning behind the numbers. Before we continue, there are two more options that hold special meaning in the questions the researchers gave. The phone number ending in 514 reads as 五幺四, which sounds like 我要死, meaning I want to die. And as for lantern colors, the kids did kind of pick up that red was more common. Red is the lucky color in China, symbolizing prosperity, which is why you'll see it a lot at celebrations and weddings. But for the kids, aside from just noticing red more, they had no clue about any meanings the color held. With that confirmed, researchers asked the questions on lanterns and phone numbers to both groups. One option was always $10, the other $20. In the lantern scenario, Chinese kids pretty 
pretty much would always go for the cheaper option, whereas Chinese adults only went for the cheaper option between the two neutral choices, like a blue and purple lantern. Whenever red or white lanterns were involved, the choices were overwhelming either to get the red lantern for $20 or avoid the white lantern that was $10. And the exact same trend occurred for phone numbers. Researchers therefore were able to conclude that adults had successfully generated a fictional dimension, being auspiciousness, and made decisions based on it, maximizing worth. Whereas children didn't see any hidden meanings behind the colored lanterns and numbers, so they could only maximize value, because that was the only dimension they had to base choices off. As a mini recap, by this stage, researchers know a few things. One, giving away the bigger pair is an action that people actually do in real life. And two, the presence of a fictional dimension, as we just saw, can alter your actions. Now, researchers wanted to revisit the act of yielding. In our luckiness scenario, the choice of phone number or lanterns only impacted you. In the next experiment, it's actually quite similar to choosing between $5 and $10 again, but instead of getting participants to do some unrelated task first and then actually start the experiment where they thought it was over, the researchers this time let them in on the question from the get-go. Participants could either choose to take one black pencil or two black pencils. However, researchers told one half, whatever you don't choose, we're going to give to your friend. And they didn't say anything to the other half. After making their choice, researchers then asked participants to explain how they would benefit from their choice. In the solo group, more people chose the better option of getting two pencils. But in the group where researchers told them, whatever you don't choose goes to your friend, the preference for the better option went down. From the responses that were given, respondents from the friend group who yielded said that their choice would make my friend happy or aid in developing and maintaining the friendship. Researchers therefore concluded that tying a social relationship to the choices could encourage participants to choose the option with lesser value because that held more worth. That being said, people aren't always going to make the choice based on worth, although they have done this every time so far. Remember when we said ultimately the final choice comes down to which dimension has a bigger difference in satisfaction? This was perfectly demonstrated in the next experience experiment by Zheng and others, where participants could be seen prioritizing money instead. Researchers invited 92 adult participants to set up the following scenario. You are booking a wedding banquet for your friend and you have two dates to choose from. On August 18th, the price is 4,000 yuan and on September 5th, the price is 3,000 yuan. Out of these two dates, Chinese people would consider the first date, August 18th, to be a prosperous date because of the number 8 while September 5th is just another day. So as you can expect, the majority of participants at 74% said they would pay more to secure the August 18th date. However, when the event was changed from being a friend's wedding banquet to a friend's dinner party, 85% of adults said they would instead choose the cheaper option now and hold the dinner on an ordinary date. Therefore, this experiment showed that people wouldn't always prioritize the fictional dimension and that yielding or following superstitions is only chosen when it is worth it. In the context of a wedding, because it was seen as a once in a lifetime thing, you would pay extra to secure a lucky date because you would want to give the happy couple all the prosperity and good wishes they can get. But a friend's dinner party? With that thousand dollars you saved, you know we're eating extra good tonight. The trade-off of value and worth by yielding is something that has been socialized into Chinese culture. And Zheng and others' final experiment, which I would just summarize the findings for, showed that options that generated greater worth or options that upheld social cultural values were more preferred by seniors than by younger respondents. So the older we get, the more cultural values matter to us. After seeing all these experiments, what does this tell us? Two things. First, humans are innately great at sizing up different options and choosing the one that maximizes value. You and I both know it, even if we've never realized it. That's why this title threw you off. Because why on earth would anyone choose $5 when they can get $10? Second, even though we know what the better value option is, as we grow up and become more socialized, we give more thought to the meaning or worth of our action rather than just the action itself. And worth, as we discussed today, is dictated by social cultural factors. That's why in the context of China, people will yield and give up the better option of receiving $10 if you tell them it'll go to their friend instead. Before we wrap up, there are some funny situations that occur as a result of yielding. And I feel like I need to at least show you guys this picture. These are a bunch of yum cha dishes. And notice how on every plate, there's one more bite left. This is isn't because it's bad luck to eat the last piece or because everyone's too full, but because everyone is yielding. By taking the last piece, you deny someone else the chance to eat it. So the result of everyone at the table being respectful is letting all of these last bites go cold. Or at least until one person finally calls out how ridiculous the situation is and the conversation evolves into, you take it. Oh no, no, you take it. Oh no, I've eaten too much. You take it. No way, you barely ate. You take it. <sighs> 
Tell myself if I can smell the dim sum on my table right now. Coding is a core part of Chinese culture and has a huge impact on how Chinese people make decisions. If we zoom out a bit and think about what this means for all of us, our ability to generate fictional dimensions is huge because it allows us to overturn more instinctive drives like basing things off value and instead thinking about what they're worth to us. In Harari's book, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, he argues the ability to compose fictions to convey information about intangible things was the key for humans to cooperate effectively in big lumbers and rise to the top of the food chain. So our ability to see pairs, not just as pairs, but as choices which have consequences beyond what we can physically see, allowed us to be here today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know if anyone questioned why I have USD because I'm clearly not American, but it's because by the time this video is out, I'll be in the States for the first time. I'm so excited. I just want to know what all the fast food tastes like. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this content, let me recommend you a cultural exploration I did on live streaming and loneliness and how our social relationships have changed as a result of streaming. It's super interesting and I think you'll like it. Thank you guys again for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll give you the bigger pet, even if you don't subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!